He is a spectacular uh, pianist, one of my favorite. Let's give a great round of applause for Mr. Emmett Cohen. On the drums, Kyle Poole. And on bass, that's Philip Norris. And it feels nice not to be judged. If you don't get, if you don't get it, ask your neighbor.
Thank you very much. How's everyone doing tonight? That seems to be the spirit in indie all the time, you know? And that's why it's one of the greatest places on earth. And we've been a lot of places, so we are officially the authority on that. So. <laughs> Um, it's great to be back. Uh, there's so many friends here, so so many f family members, extended family members. Um, a brief history. When I was 19 years old, about 13 years ago, um, I was asked to apply for a competition called the American Pianist Association. And I think I had only been to Indianapolis once for the Jazz Band of America. Um, and I, I, I came back to, to compete and I lost. Um, <laughs> and then uh, four years later, but I made a lot of friends, and and, and it was a it was it, it was a experience that really enriched um, my soul, and 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 I grew up a lot through through that experience, um, in every kind of way. And then four years later, they uh, inspired or they, I was inspired to try again because it's like the Olympics, this American Pianist Association thing. It only comes around once every four years. <laughs> adding to the cachet, and every year they offer a little bit more money if you win, and a little bit more money if you lose. <laughs> so I did it again, you know, and, and for those of you who don't know, it's the, most of the competition takes place right on the stage. So it's not only the city, but it's right here. Um, you know, so I've been here when like Christian McBride and, and Dee Dee Bridgewater and everyone's sitting right there like, you know. <laughs> Breathing down my neck, like you know, I'm like my my whole career depends on this moment right here. Um, <laughs> and uh, I I did it that, that second time, and I lost again. And, <laughs> and I said I'm never doing another competition in my entire life. And then uh, you know the third the the it rolled around again, and I was still under 30, so I was still eligible. And Joel called me personally and said, "You have to come do this again." And uh, I said, okay, well, you know, if you lose, you get twenty thousand dollars. I said, it's better than any gig I have in New York at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so I did it again, and and um, in, and that was about four years ago. Next month, uh, it'll be four years, and I ended up winning the the competition. And <laughs> So that's a message to all you kids out there, never give up. <laughs> There's no kids out there. <laughs> um, but it feels great to be here in a non-competitive fashion when, whenever, um, when, whenever I'm back now. There's so many f family members, a whole table of APA people who've watched me grow up, Joel in the back who, who's been a been an uncle to me. Uh, my host parents, Tony and Bob, who who hosted me every time I came out here. And it's not like you come out one time; you come out like three times per competition. So I think I've been here more than any other city in the United States, <laughs> besides Miami, where I'm from. But originally, um, so it just feels good to be back home. And and you guys always make it feel electric. And this is this is our spot. And Dave Ali. Is such a nice host and renovated this whole place. <laughs> you know, Mark, Mark, whose photos are all over the wall. I don't see mine yet, though. <laughs> Still waiting for a good one. I see you with the camera. <laughs> Next time. Oh, my God. So, uh, anyway. It's, it's a pleasure to be home. On the drums, uh, he's been here with me many times and uh, has been here in Indy with Cecile McLaurin Salvant and traveled with Wynton Marsalis and has been all over the world with, with, with the greats. And uh, we've been playing together for about 10 years. I met him down at Small's Jazz Club in New York City. When he was 18, he was running a jam session there. And uh, I would go hang with him and he just so lit up the room with his smile and his, his um, warm spirit, uh, which is which is something that uh, that that is very valuable as a jazz musician, especially as they age, they turn to they tend to get a little jaded. But it hasn't <laughs> hasn't happened to Kyle. He's still just warm, and 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 he make he makes you want to love the music. <laughs> See now, Phil's about he's he's new. He's a little bit younger, so he's like Kyle. Are you jaded yet? No. Um, 
Anyway, he's one of the great drummers of our time. His name is Kyle Poole. <laughs> On the bass from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Kyle's from LA, if anyone is wondering. Um, from, what's that? He's got some roots here in Indianapolis. Yeah. yeah. Half of his family. I remember some one one year we met your entire family at some bar. Yeah, yeah. We've had some experiences here in Indy, you know, over the years. Uh, have you been here before? For ba Jazz Band of America? Well, same program as me when he was in high school. So, but that's at least seven years ago. Phil is the youngest, youngest, youngest new member of the trio. He's only 25 years old. <laughs> Which is amazing. It's like you you, ne you never you never imagine yourself being like you know old the old older guy who's you know hanging out with the younger musicians who are then giving you vitality. I've spent my whole life trying to be around the old musicians, and then there's this like shift where now you're trying to be around the young musicians because they bring something fresh. I understand now. Um, anyway, he 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 did five years at the Juilliard School of Music, got his master's as undergrad, and uh, from there just been working pretty much every day since he graduated. <laughs> and um, it's, it's been a pleasure to watch his ascent in New York City, and I'm so thrilled we, we have the chance to play together many, many nights this year and develop together and grow together. And uh, he's contributed a lot already to, to, to what we do, and we're so thrilled to have him here. That's Mr. Philip Norris. <laughs> Uh, we played a couple of uh, uh, tunes that we love playing in this band. Uh, the last one was Without a Song. And uh, we started with something from uh, Birth of the Cool, a famous Miles Davis album that's called Venus de Milo, um, written by Jerry Mulligan. And uh, we'd like to continue now with a piece by B B Bud Powell. Uh, this is called I'll Keep Loving You. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to continue now with an original composition. I wrote this during the pandemic while living in Harlem. Um, this is a kind of a reflection of, of being in the Roaring Twenties again in this century, um, which, is, which was a special place where we live in Harlem. Um, I live on Edgecombe Avenue, the same avenue that Duke Ellington lived on. And for those of you who don't know, during the pandemic, we did a Harlem rent party, uh, very similar to the ones that happened 100 years ago. A uh, few people in this room have been live. Others have seen on, the, uh, on YouTube and Facebook. If you haven't seen it, check it out. This is a piece that this is a piece that encompasses the spirit of that. It's called Spill in the Tea.
That's Kyle Poole on the drums. I always, uh, I wear a, like a fitness tracker thing on my wrist. <laughs> and it, it always thinks I worked out after that song. <laughs> it's like we detected a workout. What was it? Was it s cycling or, or running? Or I'm like, no, it's spilling the tea. <laughs> that means uh, releasing the gossip for those of you who, uh, who are wondering. It's like, you know, giving up the gossip. So these guys know I'm, I've been known to, you know, don't tell me any secrets, in other words. You know, we're gonna play something from uh, from Fiddler on the Roof. I played, you know, this one comes in waves. Um, I think I played this back in the very first competition I was in, um, because I grew up on the, because I grew up on this musical. Um, but uh, you know, a good song is like a is like a gigantic mirror, and uh, you know, artists, especially jazz musicians, we can play a good tune our whole lives and see a different part of ourselves through it um, in different years, different decades. And uh, here goes our rendition of uh, Matchmaker.
How about it for Philip Norris on the bass?
Kyle Poole on the drums. <laughs> Philip Norris on the bass. Y'all want to hear one more? Any more than one more, we'll have to, you have to buy a CD. <laughs> um, we just want to thank, yeah, you already have them all, Bob. <laughs> That's Bob the heckler, you know. <laughs> I've stayed at his house more, more times than, than most of my relatives, so. <laughs> uh, that was a Cedar Walton mashup called uh, Groundwork. And then before that, you heard uh, Mosaic, Mosaic. And uh, you know, sometimes we like to be free and, and weave in and out and, and try new things. And uh, so I'm exploring a little bit in the piano there, which is totally safe. <laughs> Everyone from the APA knows this, it's fair, fair game. Joel's got his, 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 uh, his palm and his, his face in his palm over there. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> Um, we, just, I, we just really want to thank you for coming. It's always a joy to be here at the Jazz Kitchen, here in Indianapolis, anywhere. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a journey coming back here and, and growing alongside all of you. And that's what it's really about. Um, I find that every time I come, I have a little bit different message. And you know, after traveling so much post-pandemic now, where we couldn't see anyone, um, but we connected with a lot of people through the airwaves, uh, through Emmett's Place. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Be being able to visit um, different places. We just got back from, from Korea and Thailand and Indonesia. And we're, you know, we're all over the place. And uh, a lot of people over there have seen the show and connected with what we're doing. And, and we just, when we were in Korea, we did a... Uh, an Emmett's Place style thing where we invited Korean musicians to come join the band and sit in with us. And um, our goal has, has shifted over the years, but especially now, uh, just to, to bring people together in whatever way possible. And that means audiences, musicians, um, fans, uh, listeners, new people that may have never seen us before. And uh, we, we really strive to kind of unify as best as possible. And, and through that, we've discovered that our, our mission is to bring a little bit of joy, a little bit of peace and happiness, and promote the values that jazz has always pr promoted, um, which are ones of positivity and diversity and inclusion uh, and compassion and yeah. peace and uh, you know just love. And that's what it's about. So thank you very much. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon.